Jenny Zynga struck gold with hit games like Farmville, Words with Friends, Zynga Poker, and then there was a really long dry spell and you were brought in to turn the company around. What does the new Zynga look like today? Uh, the new Zynga is a mobile first company. We are completely focused and dedicated to driving what we call forever franchises on mobile. Wasn't Zynga always a mobile first company? No, it was on web. It uh, really made its name on the Facebook platform uh, back in the day on Canvas. Uh, and then when the transition of the market from Facebook Canvas to mobile happened, uh, Zynga got out of position. And so when our team came in three years ago, uh, our job was to transition the company fully over to mobile, get Farmville and Words with Friends and Zynga Poker to be working on mobile in a much bigger and more effective way and that's what we we've, we've sought out to do and that's what we've accomplished so for you is it still about just creating these hits and then making sure you can create another one it or, is, or it's is a, success something different you know I mean it, games is a perfect conflict of technology uh, and entertainment and and it is a hit driven business but what's cool about mobile is people will play mobile games for very long periods of time Zynga poker is 10 years old words with friends is eight years old and we have fans that have been playing those games for very long periods of time and because we have a free-to-play model that's accessible to every Everyone, it's really important to bring them into the game and then give them enough due to say stay in the game for as long as possible. So it's a live operations kind of mentality. It's very fast, it's very quick, um, and it's focused on daily rewards. You worked at EA for two decades. Yes. And you've got Google now trying to enter the gaming industry. It's already being called the Netflix of gaming, which might be overly optimistic, but what do you think of Google's efforts here? Look, I think gaming is a fantastic category to be in because it's constantly innovating. And if you look at Google's announcement, it's innovating on multiple levels, which I think is good for consumers. Uh, and it has some open questions, though. I think what's good for consumers is it's starting to bring streaming as a distribution innovation available to everyone, which as a content maker is a great thing. You know, content innovation and distribution innovation go hand in hand. So the ability to reach multiple screens and players everywhere through streaming is great. I think what they're doing as well by removing a lot of the price up front for hardware opens it up to other bands where people might not have the $500 to buy a console. So we really like those aspects of it. Whether or not subscriptions work or not is, remains to be seen. There's a, there's a kind of a, a question out there about how many subscriptions will a gamer have? You, you're going to have content exclusives on different platforms. It's not quite like movies where you have you know, an unlimited library. So there's going to be a lot of challenges in terms of how many subscriptions gamers will pick up and then how does it work for content makers? The production model for games can be very expensive and when you're divvying up a, a subscription price on a monthly basis, it doesn't always work out. So I think that'll be one of the biggest challenges for them to figure out. Do you have any plans to put Zynga's games on Google's platform? Uh, we've, we've talked to Google. We're very good partners with them on the mobile Android platform, and it certainly is something that we're looking at. What about Apple or Epic? Uh, there is a bit of a Star Wars thing going on right now. Uh, again, another distribution innovation that I think benefits content makers like ourselves. So, you know, we're, we're platform uh, agnostic and we will make games available to fans wherever we can. So, you struck some, some big licensing deals Disney for Star Wars, Warner Media, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Um, what is your view on acquiring licenses versus creating? games and your own IP, which is, you know, what, what you did with Farmville. Well, when we, when we started out a couple years ago looking at the business, we felt we had room for some strategic licenses. We like big licenses that last for very long periods of time. I stood in line for the first Star Wars <laughs> and I'm still working on it, you know. And so from our perspective, we want franchises that last for very long periods of time. And those are brands that have huge global audiences and, and really helps cut through the clutter in mobile. There's a lot of mobile games released every year. The stores are, are, are flooded with titles. And when you have Star Wars, Harry Potter and Game of Thrones, it really cuts through that clutter that you see in terms of how things are merchandised or communicated. So brands are powerful multipliers to attract audiences and bring customers into your portfolio. At the same time, we do have a lot of wholly owned IP like Farmville, like Cityville, you know, Words with Friends, Zynga Poker, that really balances out having owned IP as well as the licenses.